So let's roll into it. Regent is actually a startup based out of Boston. They are part of Y Combinator's winter 2021 class. So big deal. They got backing from Peter Thiel. I think it's Mark Cuban too. Mark, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Mark Cuban. And the company was founded by MIT grads. They got a lot of MIT people that are working as engineers, a lot of talented folks. So they're, the problem they're trying to address is pretty straightforward, right? Transporting people is getting more and more important, especially if you're able to do it in a manner that's no carbon or low carbon. And the way that they're approaching this problem is using a ground effect vehicle. So you might be asking yourself, well, what in the heck is that? Yeah. Great question. Uh, that's what I was going to ask. What is a ground effect vehicle and how the heck great, does it work? Great question. So let's talk about a plane. When it's flying, the wing is trying to push down air in order to get pressure going to generate some lift. Now, if you have that wing close to a surface, like a body of water, and you keep decreasing that distance between the bottom of the wing and the surface of the water, you can keep intensifying the pressure that's building up and creating more and more lift. The more lift you have, the more efficient the vehicle becomes, and therefore you're going to use less power to push it forward. Okay, so let me see if I've got a handle on this. A ground effect vehicle basically works mm -hmm. like a plane. Um, yes. In a plane, you have wings, and on the top side of the wing, you want low pressure, and on the bottom side, you want high pressure, and that generates yes. lift, which is what makes the whole plane go. Um, and so when you have a ground effect vehicle, it's the ground is creating extra high pressure underneath the wing, so it's you basically get um, super high pressure underneath the wing, much more lift, a lot less drag. Basically, whenever you've got a wing close to the ground or close to water with this ground effect, you can have a higher efficiency um, plane, so to speak. You hit the nail on the head. You got it. Um, what's interesting is that this vehicle that they're developing is going to be compatible with existing docking infrastructure. So you don't need to build out like an airport or a docking bay for these things. They're just going to use what's already there. Okay, and so it's, it's a, a boat? Uh, plane is it kind of both <laughs> it's underdog no it's it's kind of like <laughs> both it, it's it's like a plane that flies strictly on top of the water and it actually has a hydrofoil before it takes off so it can generate some some uh, okay so yeah at low speed at docking it travels like a boat and that's like the landing gear in a plane so when it's rolling around the ground instead this thing's traveling around like a boat and then when it wants to go into high-speed travel mode, it lifts off and it hovers above the water, yep. flying like a plane. There, there's like this Soviet-era craft. I forgot. It's like the Acrop... I, I can't remember it. I watched a YouTube video on it a while ago. It's like an engineering feat. It's so crazy. You should definitely check it out at some point. But anyways, I'm going on a tangent. Uh, what I was going to say is that what's cool about this is that um, it's... It's, it's going to be able to use existing infrastructure, and it's for coastal travel. So, for example, if you and I wanted to go from Virginia right now to New Jersey, which I think should be about the 180-mile range that it can support, we should be able to hop on, and we should be able to get there pretty quickly because this thing can travel up to 180 miles per hour in comparison to hopping on a plane, you know, taking an Uber to the airport, hopping on a plane, getting there, getting on another Uber, getting to our destination, and this should be faster, this should be more environmentally friendly, and it, maybe it's even more economical. The figures aren't really out yet. But consumers can expect to see this option start being available to them by around 2025. So in the very near future, you can see some region crafts by the coast taking you from maybe one state to another. That's pretty exciting, but I want to bring up a nuance that we've discussed before when talking about electric aircraft. And it's actually something that Johnny brought up, so I can't take credit for it. Again, Johnny being super insightful. Um, when we talked about electric aircraft before, we shied away from battery electric aircraft because you know, as a plane flies longer and longer, the battery becomes dead weight because when you're burning fuel, um, that mass is released from the plane. But when you're using a battery, that mass is still there. So a plane becomes less efficient as it moves forward. Um, is that the same case here or is it basically just efficient enough and a short enough range that that doesn't matter just like yep. electric vehicles on the road yeah that's exactly what i think it is again we, we don't know too many details about what kind of batteries they're using how heavy it is how heavy the whole craft is i'm sure they're doing their best to save weight and be compatible with their environment using composites 
But my guess is that the range that they're, I mean, max range is 180 miles. That's less than a Tesla Plaid, which is like 400 miles. The range is short enough and the whole system is efficient enough where the battery weight is not too much of a concern. Yeah, and that makes sense to me. Like if I were to drive from where we are now in D.C., to New Jersey, it might take me three to four hours depending on traffic. And, you know, probably my average speed would be somewhere between 40 and 50 miles an hour if I'm lucky. But the fact that this thing can travel 180 miles per hour, it's going in the ocean where there's not traffic and you're not going to get stuck up with rush hour in Baltimore. I mean, if I were able to afford this, that probably makes a ton of sense for me to do regional travel, especially if as a commuter, it could probably, you know, let us travel to New Jersey for our daily commute if we wanted to, instead of having to be restricted to where we live in DC. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe we could even go to New York so I, I can actually go to New, to see New York for the first time in my life. That'd be cool. Yeah, you got to go. <laughs> you can take me in 2025 when this comes out. Yeah, let's do it. 